Hi, I'm John Adams, Technical Director from Spectrum, and I'm here today to give you details about installing, binding, calibrating, and setting up your AVC 4210 receiver. Let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is cover installation. So I have a 4210 here, and what's important to understand, the 4210 has a function called auto orientation. That means that you can install this in one of six orientations. Obviously, you can install it flat, you can install it upside down, or you can install it on any of the flat edges such that that flat edge be facing down. During the binding process, when you first bind the receiver, it knows the orientation that you have based on the gravitational force, and it will automatically orient the internal sensors such that it'll give you the right orientation. So when you're doing this installation, we recommend servo tape. Um, some servo tape is included with the uh, 4210. You can use that, or you can use any kind of typical uh, two-sided foam servo tape. And by the way, in electric vehicles, we're going to recommend uh, one thickness of servo tape. In some gas vehicles, like I have a 5T here, or nitro vehicles that have a higher level of vibration, you may find it necessary to use a couple layers of servo tape, or even some thick foam tape, because the vibration can get into the sensors and can cause some uh, unwanted steering inputs. So um, install this in any of those six ways using servo tape and you're ready for the next step. To take full advantage of your SRS 4210 AVC system, we highly recommend one of Spectrum's four channel transmitters. This includes the DX4R Pro, the DX4C, and the DX4S. Now to start, you need to set those to factory default settings. This includes either selecting a model that's never been used or to simply go in and reset the model that you intend on using. I've got a transmitter here that's already set to factory default settings. Now we'll go to the next process, which is called binding. So when you bind, the first thing that you'll need to do is insert your bind plug into the battery bind port, as I'm doing here. By the way, notice that we have the servos, the throttle and steering servos, already plugged in. So with the bind plug plugged in and the servos plugged in, I'm going to power it up using a separate battery pack. If you have an electronic speed controller, you simply turn on the um, switch on the electronic speed controller and you'll notice that you have a red or an amber flashing light. That indicates the receiver is in bind mode. And the next thing you do is go to your transmitter, turn on your transmitter, scroll to the bind section where it says bind, press the bind system and you'll notice that the receiver will flash a couple times, it'll go out, and then the receiver will come on. Now this is extremely important. The first thing that you need to do every single time that you bind, and that's calibrate your system. In order to calibrate the system, it's necessary to first, and in this order, go to full throttle and you'll notice that the LED goes out then release the throttle. The LED comes back on. Go to full brake. You'll notice the LED goes out. Release the, the throttle. It comes back on. Full right steering, and you have to do right first. The LED will go out. Center, and then full left. After you do that, you'll notice that the LED makes two quick blinks, and that tells you that calibration was successful. So anytime you bind, and anytime you rebind, you must go through this calibration process. This next step is really important. Now that we're bound and we had initial calibration, now it's necessary to verify that all your functions are working in the right direction, you have the right amount of travel, and the trim is correct. So simply go through, check your steering, be sure it's going in the right direction, be sure you have the right amount of travel and it's trimmed correctly. Same thing with the throttle. Do that in your transmitter by adjusting your travel adjust and your sub trim and also your serving reversing. Now, here's the important part. Once you have everything going in the right direction and trimmed correctly, then you absolutely must rebind and recalibrate the system. Previously, the system was calibrated for 100% travel. Now, your travel, your trims, and so on are, are different and they're appropriate for the car, and the receiver must learn those new settings. So, rebind and recalibrate. Now we're ready to set up the AVC functions in the transmitter. Using one of the four channel radios that we recommended, in this case I have a DX4R Pro, so from the main screen, press the roller, then scroll down until you get to the AVC setting, highlight the AVC setting, and then you'll see it comes defaulted to inhibit, so change inhibit to active, 
So you see that you have your three settings, your steering gain, throttle gain, and steering priority. So you can assign those functions to any switch that you want by programming a switch, and then you can actually adjust it on the fly, or you can simply adjust it in this screen, and then you'll have a fixed point. So here's a really important thing to know. Steering gain, think of steering gain as stability. So as you increase the value of steering gain, the car or truck will become more stable. So it will track more truly, especially when you're going straight, it'll be very stable. Now, if that steering gain is turned too high, you'll have a function called oscillation. So as the truck or car gets going really fast, the car will oscillate from right to left. That means that your gain setting on steering is too high. If your gain setting is too low, the car simply won't be stable. Each car and each track type are going to be totally different, so you just need to adjust that value until it's well below the point where it oscillates, but it's certainly high enough so that you get the stability you want. So that's how steering gain works. Throttle gain, or also called throttle intervention, is utilized to reduce the throttle as the tail end of the car starts to slide. The way that you adjust this is start with zero. Then you go into a hard corner and you, you turn in, and if the tail end starts to come out, as you apply throttle, you increase that throttle gain. That'll keep the tail from sliding out. So if the truck is spinning out constantly as you're coming off the corners, increase your throttle gain. If you can't get the tail out far enough, then decrease your throttle gain. Now the third item is called priority or steering priority. And what this does is it allows the car to make a more aggressive turn in as it's entering the turn. The way steering priority works is as you increase the steering angle or you give a steering input around center, you'll have the full gain that you have programmed in. As you move the steering wheel away from center, you'll have less and less gain depending upon the amount of priority that you have. In fact, if you program 100% priority, it'll actually turn the gain off at full steering and then the gain will increase as you get close to center. So what steering priority does and how it's adjusted drive the car and turn in aggressively into your tightest corner. If the car won't turn in, won't carve a radius at the level that you want it to, increase your steering priority. If the car spins out, then decrease the steering priority. By utilizing those three functions, you can tremendously manipulate the handling and performance of your car. So the information that we've provided on this video should get you started with AVC. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit Spectrum rc.com slash avc or give our product support staff a call. They'll be happy to help. By the way, the 4210 system has been in the field for several weeks now and we're getting several questions and I'd like to address some of these questions with you. One of the questions we get is power requirements. What do I use to power the system with? So that's quite simple. If you have an electric vehicle, it's probably going to have a BEC built into it, which is a six volt system. So if you're using an electronic speed control from any major manufacturer, you simply plug that into the throttle and you're, you're taken care of, no problem. What is important to know, if you have a gas vehicle or if you're using a separate receiver pack, don't use simply a four cell uh, double A pack or even a four cell nickel metal hydride pack. You need to use a higher voltage pack. The AVC system drives the servos at a much higher rate so the current consumption is higher and the current draws higher and if you use a four cell pack there's a high probability that you'll have brownout issues. If you're using nickel metal hydrides you need to use a five cell pack or use a 2S lipo pack or a LIFE pack. That's what you need for power requirements. The second thing that's important to understand, we have customers that call frequently and they say, my calibration isn't taking correctly. That's likely because you have your travel adjust turned down too far. By the way, during the calibration process, the transmitter travel adjust for throttle and steering needs to be at 85% of above or above. If it's below that, you'll notice that that LED light doesn't go out and come on in the sequence that it's supposed to. So in most cases, your travel adjust is going to be adjusted higher than that anyway. The one exception is if you have a gas car, a lot of times gas car uses a small amount of brake, typically 30 or 40 percent for the brake side. In order to overcome this, what you need to do is during that calibration process, go ahead and bump up your travel adjust for your throttle on the brake side as well as the travel side above 85 percent. Then go through the normal recalibration process or calibration process and then after you've calibrated, then you can dial down that brake to that 30 or 40 percent or whatever works. So it's very important. Your travel adjust must be 85 percent or greater on all your channels in order to properly calibrate. The next thing that people need to know is we talked earlier about the um, steering 
um, gain and how we have heading hold around neutral. Now to reset that trim around neutral, what's necessary to do is power cycle the receiver. So say for example, I turn the transmitter on and I notice that the trim's way off. And I simply will trim this using my trim on my steering trim and now it's going straight. Well in order for the receiver to relearn that trim position, it's important to simply turn the receiver off and then back on again. That will recenter the trim and now your heading hold will be set up for centering. And then one last thing, this was covered in the video previously, but it's so important I need to cover it here again. And that is, anytime you bind, you must recalibrate. We've actually had several customers that have sent receivers back in because they, you know, they run it for a while, everything works fine, they take it out of a vehicle, they put it in another vehicle, they rebind it, but they forget to calibrate. And you know, obviously the system's not going to work if you don't recalibrate. And like I said, we've had customers actually send receivers back in, absolutely nothing is wrong with it, they simply forgot to recalibrate. Very important point. Thanks again. Have fun with ABC.